Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After discussing the shape of the molecules, we will look at polar and non-polar molecules. Now, to, uh, to determine whether a molecule is polar or non-polar will depend on the electronegativity of the atoms that are combined in the molecule. The electronegativity is defined as the chemical property which describes the power of an atom on the ra rather than power the ability of an atom to attract electrons towards itself. And we see that when atoms combine, they have electrons uh, being shared between the atoms. And depending on the electronegativity, the electrons may be shared equally or it may be shared unequally in a molecule. So if the electrons are shared equally in a molecule, we have a nonpolar molecule. A nonpolar molecule is a molecule where the electrons are evenly spread out throughout the molecule. Then, if the electronegativity has a, a large variance of more than, say, um, 2.1, then uh, we will discuss that a little later, where we see that we have a polar molecule that is formed. In a polar molecule, the electrons are not shared equally between the atoms. So the electrons are uh, more to, towards the one side or um, towards a molecule with a higher electronegativity. And we will look at a few examples later. A polar molecule is also called a dipole, and I think that is important uh, later when we look at some examples that we're going to do. Now, the first example we will be looking at is the hydrogen molecule. So if you look at the hydrogen molecule, it is important to see how the hydrogen molecule looks. So if we go here, using this um, Java applet made, made by PHET, and those are excellent applets which you can look at on the web. If you look at hydrogen, we see that hydrogen is two, hydro, the hydrogen molecule is two hydrogen atoms that are combined in a linear structure. Now, if you look at the electrostatic potential here, we see that we have the case where the electrons are evenly shared between the two hydrogen molecules. So there isn't one, hydro the hi one hydrogen molecule doesn't um, pull the electrons more towards itself than the other hydrogen molecule. Because if you look at electronegativities, hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. So each hydrogen has the same electronegativity and they will have an equal pull on the electrons. That's why we get this evenly shared electron, uh, electron cloud, so to say, between the two hydrogen molecules. And we can say that a hydrogen molecule is a nonpolar molecule. Another example which we're going to look at in our case will be the oxygen molecule. And we can also look at the nitrogen molecule at the same time. And if you look at it here, if you look at, uh, before I do the oxygen, we see that the hydrogen has a single bond with another hydrogen atom to form the hydrogen molecule. If we take oxygen as an example, we see that the oxygen has a double bond between the two oxygen atoms. And the electronegativity of oxygen is 3,5. And again, here we see that the electrons are evenly shared between the two oxygen uh, atoms, which makes it a nonpolar molecule. And the third example which we have is the nitrogen molecule. And in the nitrogen molecule, we see that each nitrogen has, um, it's, it has three electrons which are shared with another nitrogen. And this forms a triple bond between the nitrogen molecule. And again, yeah, nitrogen has an electronegativity of three and the electrons are evenly shared between the two nitrogen molecules. So because we have uh, the electrons that are evenly shared between the hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen molecules, we can say that they are nonpolar, the, they have a nonpolar bond because the electrons are not pulled to the one atom or to the other. And we can say that a molecule as a whole is a nonpolar molecule because there isn't uh, polarity of the electrons that are shared between the atoms. Now, going further, we can see 
other examples. If you look at BF3 and CH4 as examples of molecules, if you take BF3 to begin with, boron tetrafluoride, we see that boron has an electronegativity of 2 and fluorine has an electronegativity of 4. So the variance of electronegativity is 2 and it is relatively high. So that's why the electrons will be pulled towards the fluorine rather than the boron. So the electron density will be more towards the fluorine side than the boron side. Now because this is a, a trigonal planar molecule and it is a flat structure, we see that the, this uh, bar shows us that the red side is negative and the blue side is positive. Because this is a flat structure, we can see here that the edges are red. So the fluorine side will be negative, this fluorine side will be negative, and this fluorine side will be negative, and the center of the molecule will be positive because this has polar bonds. So the boron-fluorine bond in the molecule is a polar bond. But if you look at the mole molecule as a whole, it's a non-polar structure because the because it's symmetrical and because it is symmetrical the outsides of the molecule have negative charges and the inside is positive. So although boron tetrafluoride has polar bonds between the boron and the fluorine, because it's a symmetrical structure, it becomes a non-polar molecule. So in the E, there are incidences where we can have polar bonds, but the molecule as a whole can be a non-polar molecule. And just to show it to you at a different angle, we see it is a um, planar structure. And we see that all the edges on the outside are red and the insides are, the center is blue. And the third example which we're going to look at will be, uh, the next example that we're going to look at will be, CH4. So we see that BF3 has polar bonds, but because it's a symmetrical structure, we see that it is a nonpolar molecule. Now let's see if that also applies to CH4. CH4 is commonly known as methane. And if you look at the methane molecule, carbon has an electronegativity of 2,5 and hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2,1. So the variance is 0 0,4. So the carbon uh, has a slightly denser amount. The electrons are more uh, concentrated on the, the carbon side than the hydrogen side, but very slightly. So then here again, because we have a tetrahedral structure, it's a symmetrical structure. And we see here uh, that because it's a symmetrical structure, that the outsides of the molecule have hydrogen. So there's hydrogens on the outside. The center will be slightly negatively charged and the outside, the edges of the molecule will be slightly positively charged because the, car the carbon will attract the electrons towards the center. And we can see here that the outsides of the molecule are blue and the center will be red. So that is the case that we can see here that again, between carbon and hydrogen, in a methane molecule, we have a slightly polar bonds between the C and the H. So the electrons are more concentrated onto the hydrogen, uh, to the carbon than the hydrogen. So the hydrogen side is positive and the carbon center is negative. But because it's a symmetrical structure, the outside will be positive and the center will be negative. So the molecule as a whole is non-polar but the carbon-hydrogen bond is a polar bond. So this we see is also the case that PF3 and CH4 have polar bonds, but because the molecule as a whole is symmetrical, the molecule becomes a nonpolar molecule. Now the next case we will look at is that what, do we, what, what occurs if the molecule is not symmetrical, it's asymmetrical. So here we have examples, B, um, Hydrogen fluoride has polar bonds. So we have the hydrogen and the fluorine. So looking at that example, if you look at HF as an example, we will see that hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2,1, whereas fluorine has an electronegativity of 4. And the variance is 1,9, which is quite a large variance. So the fluorine 
attracts the electrons more towards itself than the hydrogen, with the result that the electrons are more densely uh, around the fluorine rather than the hydrogen. And here we see a classic case of a polar molecule where the fluorine side will be slightly negative and the hydrogen side will be slightly positive. So here we have an, a, a structure where we can say that we have polar bonds and because it's not a symmetrical structure, we have a polar molecule. We look at Na, uh, NH3 now. And if you look at NH3, which we know as ammonia, again here we see that the nitrogen is on the top of the molecule and the hydrogens are at the bottom because of the data, uh, the, the lone pair, sorry, because of the lone pair on the top of the nitrogen, which repels the hydrogens to form a pyramidal structure rather than a trigonal planar structure. So as a result, nitrogen, because it has an electronegativity of three and hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2,1, the electrons will be pulled more towards the nitrogen rather than the hydrogen. And the result is the nitrogen side of the molecule becomes negative and the hydrogen sides, which are all at the bottom, will become positive. So if we do that, we can see it clearly like this. There's a red side, negative side, and a positive side. So we see here that because ammonia, NH3, is an asymmetrical structure, the bond between N and H is a polar bond, and the molecule as a whole is a polar molecule. And the third one to look at in this case here is uh, water. And if you look at water, the bond between hydrogen and oxygen is a polar bond because oxygen has an electronegativity of 3,5 and hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2,1. And the variance is quite large between the hydrogen and oxygen. And the result is that the electrons are pulled more towards the oxygen side and the oxygen side becomes slightly negative and the hydrogen side becomes slightly positive. So here we see that the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen are polar bonds. And because the molecule is not symmetrical, it's asymmetrical, we have a polar molecule that is formed. So here, if you look at what we've written, HF, NH3, and H2O have polar bonds. And they have polar bonds, and it is an asymmetrical structure. And because of that, we see that the molecule as a whole becomes a polar molecule. So this is a summary of um, the aspects which we can just highlight again, that if we have no non-polar bonds, then we obviously have a non-polar molecule. And we have the examples of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, any um, diatomic molecule, uh, which has same atoms that are bonded together. So non-polar bonds makes a non-polar molecule. But if they are polar bonds, then what we will have to see if is the molecule symmetrical or asymmetrical. If we have polar bonds and the molecule as a whole is symmetrical, like the case of BF3 and CH4, then the, although we have polar bonds, the molecule as a whole is non-polar. But if we have an asymmetrical structure and we have polar bonds, then the molecule as a whole will become a polar molecule. And the examples that we have here is H2O, NH3, and HF. So do we see that we have polar and nonpolar molecules and the electronegativity and the shape of the molecule plays a very important role to decide whether the molecule is a polar molecule or a nonpolar molecule. Thank you very much for watching.